Today I'd like to show you how to create a decision tree in R. I'm going to focus on the Pima Indians data set, which is uh, frequently used to illustrate classification problems. The format of this data is very simple. There are 768 rows and nine columns, which are also known as features. These features are characteristics of individuals in the data set. We will use eight of the columns, the first eight in particular, to predict the last column, which is diabetes. Since we already know the outcome, this is a form of supervised modeling. Before we build any model, let's first look at the distribution of negative cases to positive. We see that there are 500 individuals who do not have diabetes versus 268. We can create something called a baseline or null model, which would give us an accuracy percentage to beat in any subsequent model we might construct. If we don't build a model at all, and we randomly select a row from this data set and say that that individual is negative for diabetes, we would be correct 65% of the time. That's not terrible, but it certainly isn't great. What this means is that if we can't come up with a model that betters that figure, then maybe we're wasting our time. It turns out, though, that we can improve this. I'm going to use the rpart function to actually build the decision tree. I will also be using something known as the formula interface, which is fairly ubiquitous in R. It allows me to indicate the outcome variable, the variable that I'm trying to predict, in terms of one or more variables. The dot notation is a shorthand for all the other variables. What we get back is a bunch of statements that appear to be doing some comparisons. Now, you will notice that I also loaded a library called rpart.plot, which we can use to plot the decision tree for easy visualization. This is nice, and this is why decision trees are quite popular, is because you could show this to someone who does not have a statistical or quantitative background, and they would be able to figure out how this tree makes a decision. So if we took a row from the data set and we answered these questions, these comparison questions, we would be able to follow it through to a prediction of positive or negative for that individual. Now, uh, this represents an upside down tree such that this is the root node and then we have leaf nodes, and then we have terminal nodes down here, which would represent the positive or negative outcome. So we would look at someone's glucose level. If it's less than 128, we would say they're negative. If it's greater than or equal to 28, then we would look at uh, other variables and do some comparisons. Next, let's actually use this decision tree to make a prediction. In R, the generic method for performing predictions is called, quite imaginatively, the predict function. It takes as an argument the model, in this case the decision tree, the data that we're going to be predicting upon, which is the data set, the PM, and uh, we're asking for this to give us labels. This is a classification prediction, so what we would expect is a positive or negative prediction. Now we can compare this, we can take the output of this prediction and compare it with reality. And that reality is in the diabetes column of the original data set. We would hope that our predictions match exactly the true outcome, but it turns out it's not perfect. That's okay. That's why it's called a predictive model. So we see, if you look at row one, column one, uh, as it relates to negative predictions, you could see that our model matched reality 470 times. As it relates to positive outcomes, our model matched reality 137 times. So if we add these two numbers and divide it by the total number of rows in the data frame, we come up with an accuracy of 0.79, 79%. If we subtract that from 1, we have a misclassification rate of 0.21. Now, this isn't fantastic, but it's a lot better than the baseline or null model that we observed earlier. So, could we improve this? That's an interesting question. If you notice when I created the first tree, I included an argument called CP, which is a complexity parameter. 
um, that I use to prune the resulting tree to make the resulting tree a little bit easier to read than it would be by default. Let me show you what I mean. If I rebuild this model and I do not include the CP parameter, the resulting tree is still discernible. It's still something that we could follow through. We have the root node and leaf nodes, but there is more going on. So if we took a row from the data frame and tried to follow the comparisons through, it becomes a bit more tedious. How complex should the tree be? And should we tolerate higher complexity? Well, maybe we would if it gives us a more accurate model. So I went ahead and built what I'm calling an unpruned tree. And I plot it and you see that it's a little bit more uh, difficult to follow. But if we use the predict function on the unpruned tree, on the data set, the PM data set, uh, in effect, repeating our prediction process from before, it turns out that we get a higher level of accuracy than 79%. So the unpruned version of our tree actually is better, as long as we're assuming that accuracy is the sole measure of performance. You would have to then decide whether the added complexity is worth it or not. In this case, it, it is. It's not that much harder to follow through. But this leads to larger considerations of whether you should use something like a support vector machine or a neural net, which might improve even more on this accuracy. But you would have to work harder, perhaps, to defend this model. Certainly, if you were showing it to somebody who did not have a statistical background. Well, anyway, that's it for now. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to get started with decision trees in R and make some predictions. I look forward to our next video. That's it. Thanks.